Hey guys, Brian and Aaron here from five to go We are looking back at a list that we created almost eight years ago oh when we first started looking at RVs. Yeah. We had no RV experience. We had no idea what we were doing, had nope. no idea what we were looking for, but we knew we wanted to go full time and mm -hmm. we had listed our house for sale and like the gears were turning and we had to find a rig. So we did the same thing that you guys do. Mm -hmm. We turned to YouTube, we yep. searched all over the internet, we talked to everybody we knew, we went to every dealership that was within two hours. Yeah. We saw lots and lots of rigs. And Aaron actually stumbled across a <laughs> Google Doc that we had created that has a list of our must-haves. So I haven't seen this recently. <laughs> I think she just glanced at it the other day. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna go through the list yeah. of Brian and Aaron's must-have features in an RV yeah. for full-time use. This is 2017, Brian and Aaron. Yeah, this is, yes. We hadn't so, seen anything. Yeah, so let's just dive into, let's just go top to bottom and uh, just see how wrong, accurate, awful, terrible, still silly, stupid, naive probably uh -huh. in most places. So let's just do it. Uh, okay, yeah. I want to caveat this before. Just be just saying, like we would watch videos and I would just jot things down. So these are in no particular order. They okay. are just in the order of like some of them are just like, what is this question mark? Do we need to look into this question mark? So you know what? Someone watching right now may have the exact same list. Maybe. I'm very Maybe. curious because we've had a lot of discussions on our Discord server in the last week about this very thing. Right. We have a lot of people looking for RVs right now because it's... It's that time. It's that time. It's that so, time. All right, let's hit it. Okay, so uh, the thing to consider, the length and the weight of the trailer, because we were looking for travel trailers. I think that's still uh, that's valid. Very important, yeah. Very important. We thought we wanted to do under 30 feet. Yep. Um, but we, we couldn't. Yeah, once we started going into RVs yeah. and looking around and looking at floor pans and realizing that it would be two adults and three kids and a dog, and a dog under 30 feet full time. Yeah. We, it kind of became that thing where, you know, we had heard that basically like it was impossible to visit national parks if you were over 30 feet. And that was why we were doing there is some truth to that. Like you won't get into a lot of them, but there are so many campgrounds around, right like just outside national mm -hmm. parks that once we started realizing that, that that 30 foot max very quickly fell off the list. Uh, and our first rig actually was 37 feet. Yes, and so, that was, and it was perfect wonderful. for us. Yep. Yes. So length yeah. and weight of the trailer is important. Weight but... is important depending on your truck. If right. you're buying a truck, figure out the RV first, buy the truck to match. Uh, some people just can. buy the biggest truck. They just go straight for the dually and then you can get any RV you want within reason. Yep. Um, <laughs> if you have or... that budget, good for you. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. um, enjoy. Yeah. So, so yeah, length and weight are important. So not yep. bad. Not, not bad not for a bad first, first one. one. <laughs> okay. So the next one is what I was no, talking just about before. Read it. I have, okay. Just read it. Composting toilet question mark. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not for us. Not for us. No, no, no. I think that comes from like we, uh, the two main channels we watched, of course, everybody mm -hmm. watches when they start. Uh, other than us now, because we didn't exist back then, uh, is uh, KYD, yeah, Keep, Keep Your Day Dream, Dream, and Less Junk, More Journey. Mm -hmm. uh, so KYD, not so much for this. Right. But I know Nate and Marissa did a lot of boondocking. They did. Uh, especially like back in 2017 when we were first, when we first found mm -hmm. them. Uh, so that probably came from that. Possibly. Or I just saw it written somewhere and I was like, what is this? <laughs> and is this something that we need? Yeah. Not, not for us. Not for us. Not nope. for us. Nope. We're, we always have hookups. Yep. Indoor for the most plumbing. Part. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the next thing is travel trailer, fifth wheel, class A, question mark. So maybe this is before That's... we had question marked. That is literally the biggest first question. Yes. Like it really is. Yeah. Because if it's travel trailer, you're going for potentially smaller truck. You may already have a truck. Mm -hmm. It may be an F-150 like this one sitting right and out over here. And smaller budget too. Like smaller budget You can sure. start with a travel trailer if you're just like, yeah. like I just want to get out there and try this. Yeah. Travel trailer is the way to go because Absolutely. once you get to the fifth wheels, they start getting a little spendier. They, do. they, they do. have a little nicer stuff in them. Yeah. So. so, so travel trailer is, you know, more affordable, mm -hmm. smaller trucks, fifth wheel, bigger kind of sky's the limit on the budget there but you're gonna need a bigger truck I was gonna say you have to have and a bigger truck back in 2017 trucks weren't as crazy expensive no, as they are wasn't. now so we actually i think we were looking between travel trailer and fifth wheel i don't remember why i think it was just price i yeah. think 
that we ended up with a travel trailer and f we found the 312B HDS and we just absolutely fell in love with it. Right. Well, and we could get the truck. The, right. The, we could find the F250s and that's what we went with to yeah. start with. And it was plenty big. And it, yes. Yep. Um, and then motorhome, uh, motorhome is if you want to pull something like a Jeep, like we do. Right. Uh, or if you want a big trailer with something else in it, we see people pulling motorcycles. We see people right. pulling sports cars. You could do two up trailers, four up trailer, you know, it's basically whatever you want to pull behind the motorhome if your motorhome is big enough. This thing will pull right. 15,000 pounds. I can put anything behind it that I want, including our first trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that's the biggest first question, right? Really. And, and we were starting out, like a lot of you, like, we'll try this for six months and see how it goes. We're not going to invest yeah. a whole bunch of money into this yep. lifestyle because we might hate it. Yeah, I think I mean, that, I had, our initial plan was... We, we had two yeah. toddlers with us, like... <laughs> yeah, our first plan, we had said, I remember having mm -hmm. conversations, we'll do this for six or nine months, we'll do that lap around the country. Yeah. Because uh, we did it, we left uh, Virginia the end of December, mm -hmm. and we got back to Virginia, we did down and around Big Full Loop, got back in October yeah. for trick-or-treating at Mom's. Mm -hmm. um, so that was our first, like, do we like this? Is this what we want to do? Right. And at that point, things but, happened. Yeah. If you've been following the channel, you know what happened, and we eventually went up to a motorhome and then another motorhome. So yep. yeah, it's kind of, that's how stuff evolves. evolves and a lot yes. of people do start off with that. Let's just, let's knock out a bunch of sites that are on my bucket list. Yep. And if we love it, we'll keep going. We'll make it work. If mm -hmm. we don't, we'll do something else. Right. There's nothing wrong with either of those choices. Yep. So I think that's why we chose travel trailer and the, the, yeah. the truck we could afford. It was and... the low cost of entry. Yes. The low And you can investment. do it with that. Yeah. So my absolutely. next thing on here says, Pull bar on screen door. I saw it on somebody's thing and that was amazing in the travel trailer. So before we even before we even sold the house, we pulled the trailer into the driveway. Yep. And I very vividly remember ordering boxes and boxes of stuff because you know these aren't ready to go out the door. Not for full time uh, though, So for I do sure. remember on the screen door mm -hmm. we installed one of those square grates. Because for, for the dog and for the t and the tiny humans, two that little lived kids. In our we house. didn't want the dog or one of the little kids like leaning on that lower um, screen screen and like just knocking through. it out. So I put one of those uh, metal square grid screen yep. things and also put a pull bar on it because there was nowhere to grab that. Yeah, door. there was nowhere to grab it. To this pull it. screen door on the disco behind us, it has plenty of places to grab yes. the handles. Nice. This I think this is the best screen this door the best in the screen market. Door. Uh, but the ones on the travel trailers, a lot of times they don't have anywhere to really. Yeah. grab especially if the wind is pulling it so if you're frustrated with your screen door this is a great upgrade <laughs> to have an amazing screen door. that's a lot for a screen <laughs> I know. door i know but if you do have issues with your screen door check the links down below i'll put a link to the pull bar that we had and the little screen and we also had a way that we locked the screen door yeah i used a sash lock from like uh, a window so if you have like normal windows like double hung windows when you have the bottom window down, there's a little like dish kind of shaped lock. Mm -hmm. That's called a sash lock. I put one of those sideways on the side of the screen door. Perfectly. And so I was able to reach up the way that I did the height as I went outside the screen door, popped open the thing and reached up as far as I could. And I was like, that's where we're putting it. Mm -hmm. The kids couldn't reach it, but we could reach it from outside just in case we needed to, you know, if one of us was inside, yeah. not, near the, not near the door, you could still get in and also, I'm getting off on a tangent yes. here. <laughs> Look in the links down below. There's information about screen doors, strangely enough. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to be a topic today. Hey, there we go. <laughs> so the next one um, says generators solar question mark. Uh -huh. So I think that was when people were talking about it in videos and yep. we were like, is this something that we're going to need to invest in? Because the trailer didn't have solar or a generator. It did not. It so, didn't even have like a little tiny panel just to keep the nope. batteries topped off. The solar has come a very long way yeah. since 2017. Panels are cheap, super cheap right now. Yeah, comparatively. Um, so we absolutely looked at solar at one point. Uh, we never ended up putting any on that trailer because back then panels were not as cheap. No. Like all the related equipment was not as cheap and we weren't boondocking. No, we we stay where there's at least electricity yeah. at the bare minimum. Yeah. So. And then generator. Uh, we got one. We did. We were actually were on the road for eight months. I think it was August. Yeah. And we went and got one of the Predators uh, from, from Harbor, Harbor Freight. Freight. We got the small Predator just to run one AC unit. Because uh, we were had a couple things, a things yeah, we had a couple boondocking stops planned on the way back across the north of the country. You're so cute too to run one AC. We only had one AC. That's true. 
to run our single AC on our 37 all, foot rig. Yeah, that's all that little Predator will run. Yep. Uh, it worked okay. Yeah. We carried it in the back of the truck. I, it took up so much space. The motorhomes, like the bounder before this and then the disc, and I, I hit a button on the dash. The it's generator perfect. comes on. We have as much power as we do from shore. It's fabulous. Yeah. So having an onboard generator, I think it's 100% worth it. Having one that you have to huff around in a truck and yeah. pull out, and f it just... It was too much. Yeah. It was too much for yeah. us. Um, gutter extensions. Gutter extensions. Put them on. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Yeah, because we have... They, I haven't found good ones for this, and the stuff just drips down the side, yeah. and it's dirty streaks, and it's If gross. you don't know what it is, because I had a question mark next to it, it just... It, it makes it so the water doesn't run down your rig, like yeah. from the AC kind of condensation mostly. Yep. It gets it away from the rig, so it just falls into the ground. Yep. Great. Just kicks Wonderful. it out a couple more inches. Um, storage locks, and it says like CH751. Was that like so what that's kind of the storage key. lock? The key. Okay, the key. that's what I thought. So if you didn't know, and it, it's fun to do this sometimes, like if you know someone that has another RV uh, that you're this. camping with. Don't do this. No, no, it's not a prank. I'm just saying have a discussion with them and talk. You probably have storage thing. bay doors, and on that key it says CH751. Yep. There are half a dozen, maybe 10 different patterns for that particular key. It is a very insecure lock. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I bet if you are camping near a friend and you both have locks that are CH751s, you can probably open each other's storage bays. Yeah. So that's, that's what that was. We never ended yeah. up replacing those. We did put an RV lock yeah. on the trailer and that is 100% worth the money. It, it is one of the best upgrades you can do because yep. you just, you, do? you don't need to carry keys around. I can always, I can hear them across the campground when yeah. people lock or unlock them. You know what it sounds like. Yeah, we've missed them on yeah. the motorhomes. Yeah, so. now this one actually, this one has a key fob like yeah. a, uh, like the car does. This thing has all the yeah. bells and whistles. You <laughs> mentioned it, it probably has it. Yeah, Heated probably, floors, yeah. yeah, it has yeah. it. Okay, yeah. storage for five people. That's it was important. Just, just a thing to, to keep yeah. in the back of your head. Yeah. But it's not just the adults or just, if you are traveling with children, mm -hmm. you have to store their crap too. Yeah, and, <laughs> and especially, a lot of you know, Ben and Brooke were both still in diapers. Yeah, they were. When we started. So you have to yeah. carry around boxes of diapers. Yeah. And you have to carry around strollers. Yeah. And like you basically figure out the stuff you need, mm -hmm. add 20% and that's how much space there you need uh, storage for. Especially when going back to the first one, yeah. we were initially looking for a rig 30 feet or less. Do you're it. not going to find storage. Nope. The only outside storage is probably going to be like a pass through underneath the mm -hmm. bed up in the front. And that's that, all that we had too, but we had more space. We had the that outside had kitchen. Things. Yeah, that's true We used too. the outside kitchen to store things like chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple other things we kept outside, like bulk stuff, like paper yeah. towels and toilet paper and stuff. But there was a lot of storage inside the 312. Yes, there was. Um, the next one is, I think it's a versus whether we wanted to get a bunk house or mm -hmm. just bunk beds. Um, so I consider a bunk house to be something that has its own door. Okay. And then bunk beds just to be like tucked into the back corner or, or in, the in, in the hallway if you're in a motorhome or a okay. um, fifth wheel. So yeah. whether you have a, a actual Separate room, room yeah. bunk room or a bunk house. Yeah. Um, and now it's really, it's rear bunks and mid bunks. And there's yeah. a couple models that have bunks in the front. Yeah. So those would be like And we decided houses. on a bunk house just because we had three kids. Mm -hmm. And we, we um, in the trailer, if you have little ones, we just took the couch out and stored it with a um, family member. Yep. And we put Ben's crib yeah. in Works the, the bottom part. It was perfect. Yeah. The, the slide was just the right length. We mm -hmm. had his crib in there. And he had and some when drawers. We, when we first started out, it wasn't even converted to the day bed. Oh, no, it was still a crib because he was, yeah, he was still and little. We had room for the Ikea uh, drawers that had all of his stuff and diapers and wipes like yeah. everything, everything everything for him just fit there in the bottom of that slide it yeah. was it was, a it was great, great great layout and then the girls were up higher yeah. um hallway bunks another reason we went with the, the bunk room is they could play and yeah. be out of the way like mm -hmm. they could be back in that room the floor could be mm -hmm. covered in their crap and we didn't have <laughs> we to walk close the door like, that's my problem with the hallway bunks is it doesn't give the kids like a space. A space. Like, they, if they play where their beds are, like, if that's where all their stuff is stored, yeah. they're going to make a mess there, and then you have to walk across it to get to your room or right. to the bathroom or if it's a rear kitchen or whatever. Well, and I wanted a room, too, because Ben and Brooke were still napping. Yes. And so being able to close that door and say, okay, it's time for you to take a nap. Absolutely. It was, yeah, it was great. And they went to bed earlier too. Yep. So there was that. The division was nice. The next one says best online retailers slash apps for RVs. Well, best online retailer, Amazon. 
Yeah, if that's what it's asking yeah. for, yeah. yeah. And then if you're looking for anything RV related, five to yeah. com slash Amazon. We have all sorts of lists mm -hmm. built about like newbie gear, tech stuff, cleaning, kitchen essentials, outdoor Pretty stuff. Pretty things. Yeah, <laughs> like it, Amazon really is is great. Plus, you can use lockers. Yeah, you can have and it shipped. you can have stuff shipped <clears throat> literally anywhere in the country and not be worried about yeah. like, oh, when am I going to be here? Does this campground take packages? Blah blah yeah. blah. Amazon really is the best option. I think so and too. And I think number two for accessories is a, for better or worse, camping world. Cause they are all over the place. Yeah. They have better prices than Amazon sometimes. Yeah. Uh, if you have a good sand card, it's, you know, 10% off. Right. I would never buy an RV from camping world, but we get, but we do buy things. From yes. Time. So yes. Yeah. But then apps. So I use, answer. I use more apps than you do. I think I don't use any, I know. <laughs> um, so we do not use an app for like GPS, RV GPS. We, no. um, if we're really concerned about a, an area or like, we're not going to be on interstates. Cause if we're on the interstate, Yep. Trucks can drive there. We're good to go. Yep. Um, there's a really big bug, and it's really freaking me out and drawing my attention. He keeps coming back now. That's fine. Until he lands on me. Okay. <laughs> so um, we, do, we do not use RV GPS. If we're going through some sketchier places, then we will dig down. Ooh. We will dig down and... Um, and look at things on the satellite. We'll look up, you know, if there's anything written about the different areas. So we don't use RV GPS. Yeah. But I do use things like um, RV Life Trip Wizard. I do use things like uh, Road Trippers. Road Trippers is... <laughs> I have some better. issues with road trippers, but I do. Better. I will use them for some things. And then I use, um, what's the one that I use all the time? All Stays, all stays. which yeah. is an iOS only. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it costs money now to use it, but I find that it's super helpful, yeah. um, for and when I'm searching heights, an area, it does, it shows, it shows bridge heights. It shows, it shows all kinds of cool things. This is not sponsored by all stays. I've just used them since before we left to do planning. Yeah. And I use it more for searching for like more family owned campgrounds that might not have a website, but have amazing prices because I am all about getting a campsite for like 15 bucks a night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of times too, you'll go on Google maps. You'll just like go to an area and say like, just type in RB camp. Yeah. to search there will be great ones that don't show that don't up show up but they will show up reason. on all stays yeah. all stays also does again not sponsored i'm just touting it for you because it's really helpful to me when we want to like um boondog at a walmart mm -hmm. they will have oh, reviews yeah. about parking at the walmarts and they're dated and yep. everything and so you can see you know if somebody was just there in the last six months and they just called ahead to make sure or mm -hmm. they, they'll put in there make sure you park by the garden center or make sure you park close to cracker barrel out by the road yep. and like it's it's very helpful when we're going to places and areas that we've never been before. So yeah. I like all stays. Let me know if you've used it. Yeah. If you use other apps, I know there's a ton of them. Tell me down below because I might want to check those out for and other things. If you things. don't want to do any planning yourself, <laughs> go to yayadventure.com. That is our travel agency yeah. that we started with some good friends of ours. And we will do all of the trip planning for you. And I'll use these tools for yeah. you. <laughs> now you can, we can just put together a route and hand it off and you can mm -hmm. do the rest. Or we can book everything for you yep. and activity tickets and mm -hmm. whale watching tickets and Disney tickets yep. and park entrances. <laughs> we can go from, from a little bit of something to everything. the whole kit and caboodle if we you're just, just like, just, all do you have it for to do me. Is drive. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, yayadventure.com. There you go. Continuing on. Shameless plug get back there. Into the <laughs> Let me get in here. Um, uh, water regulator, again, was one of those things that I heard someone talk about and I was like, what is that? And uh, I think... Water pressure regulator. There will be a video coming up uh, <laughs> very soon, kind of in mid-April. Yep. Uh, it is actually a really awesome partnership thing, that yeah. we have with a company you've definitely heard of. Oh, yeah. Uh, but there will be something all about water, including water pressure regulators and a whole bunch more, uh, I think, third week of April. So, so not to spoil that one, but... Because they're watching this one. Ye yeah. Yay or nay on a water pressure regulator. Uh, do not hook your rig up to a campground water supply without, without one. <laughs> a water pressure regulator. Yes. So. Or a electrical surge protectors. So the next one I have is vent covers. And I think I put fantastic vents or before I knew what yeah. they were called. Like, but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the, so in the 312, we had a normal vent in the... Bathroom. bathroom we had a normal vent in the bunk house mm -hmm. and then the one over the kitchen was a fantastic fan fan like a max, max air, air. yeah fan. uh 
vent covers, I 100% recommend vent covers yes. because then you can have your vents open. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry uh, about rain coming have, in. Yeah, you don't have to worry about rain or wind like blowing the lids back the wrong way. You can also leave them open or cracked on moving days uh, because the covers go, they point towards the rear of yeah. the rig. So any wind coming from the road is not yeah. going to get into them. Uh, so if you just want to like air your rig out while you're driving or, yeah. or whatever. so And we do use our vents all the time. And so. also, if you get caught in a hailstorm, that vent cover is going to take the hit first it, yeah. and not, not the actual not the vent. Actual vent. You'll have to replace it afterwards, but they're super easy to put yep. on. Um, used trailer, uh -huh. comma new mattress cost. So if we bought a used trailer, would I would want to replace the mattress. the mattress. So I was just thinking yeah. that would be an added cost that we would have needed. That's not, um, not hard. Yeah, and we've yeah. we've replaced the mattress in all all three RVs. All three of our RVs. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm going to say a couple of things and we'll just kind of go through them really quickly. Um, lightning, round. lightning round real quick. <laughs> um, locking things down when in motion. I don't know why I thought that I needed to write this down, but I hadn't had any experience. So yes, lock yeah. things down when you're in motion. Yeah, if it looks like it might fall, it's probably going to fall. So uh, quick, quick story. Uh, our first <laughs> shakedown trip in our trailer, we oh, went geez. from the house we were in. We hadn't sold it yet. Well, we had sold it, but it was still on a contract. We mm -hmm. hadn't moved out yet. Right. We took it, uh, took the rig down to the Outer Banks. The two-hour drive. Uh, yeah, two-hour drive to uh, like spend a long weekend with my dad and family, and then back. On the way down, we stopped at a Burger King. I remember it was Burger King because yep. they had a big gravel lot next door. I was like, I can absolutely get into this lot. And, and get out. Uh, so we stopped there, and we had dinner or lunch or whatever, and popped into the rig just to see if everything was okay. We went in and it was not on okay. the island, there were two sink covers on the sink, like it was two split, you know, two halves. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was on the dinette in the slide all the way up in the front corner of the rig. The other one was on the floor all the way back in the bunkins. Yeah. So from that day forward, I actually kept a roll, a roll of painter's tape yep. in the kitchen. And on every single moving day, I would just take one strip of painter's tape and just go straight across from, you know, yep. counter, cover, cover, counter, and never had a problem with that ever again. That was on our list, our checklist yep. of what to do before we leave. Always had so tape. always had painter's yep. tape. Um, the next one, tinted windows, question mark. Yes. Yeah, if you can get them. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Get tinted pane. windows, double pane. you're ordering one, get the double pane. You yep. will not regret it. Get the extra AC unit, get the, the all yeah. that stuff. Everything. You're Everything you hot. can. You're going to get hot. <laughs> um, let's cold. see. Quality tires. I mean, yeah. not a question. Like, yes, we yeah. want quality tires. Um, so a lot of the first rig we had West Lakes that people call them China bombs. We never had a problem with them. Always mm -hmm. kept an eye on the pressure. Never drove over 60, 64. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the issue with those tires is speed and under inflation. Um, however, when we did end up getting them replaced, I put Goodyear's on. Yeah. And a lot of manufacturers now are actually shipping their rigs with Goodyear's. Holy cow. So noisy. Um, so, yes, good tires. Good yeah. tires are good. I, I, mean, I put a note. Manufacturers tend to use cheap brands. They do. They absolutely um, do. And then it says, I don't know what this means. Check R value rating for temperature management. That's what? R value on the what insulation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, it I still don't know, know what that is. Like, uh, you're basically, if you're going to be a full-timer, you want to get a rig that is just, four seasons rated. Yeah, four seasons. That just means it has... Uh, insulation on the underside and maybe some extra in the roof and the walls this next one was um uh adventurous of us or uh we did not end up doing this so it says ladder is not optional yeah. need to clean roof and slides before every move no i think i did that two or three times yeah i think no, so like we were under trees that were dropping yeah. a lot of crap yeah but i ladder i like that there, we have a ladder because yes. getting up there is yeah. is good and yeah. easy um baby powder on slides Never We've never that. done it. Never heard of that. I don't know why that's on there. All righty. Um, this is one of the ones that we were looking at. Uh, we did end up getting bumper accessories attached to the frame, not the square tube. Yes. <laughs> so our trailer had a proper hitch yeah. on the back that was welded to the frame. Um, a lot of travel trailers just have a square tube bumper mm -hmm. that is not part of the frame. And if you put too much stuff on it, like if you have a spare and a grill and a couple bikes on it or yeah. you have like a big, uh, big storage rack with a bunch of totes or whatever, that bumper is going to twist off. It will break off. Yeah. All the way in the back, every time you go over a bump, that thing is slapping like crazy. Yep. So they make um, 
They make extra brackets that you can attach to those to help with that. Uh, but in general, the rear bumpers, I think they only recommend like 100, 150, maybe 200 pounds worth of stuff. Seen lots of people over that. Yeah. Alrighty. Next one, I see a leveling app. Yeah. Well, we ended up with the Levelmate Pro. Mm -hmm. Uh, it worked I really I well for us. Day one, it was yeah. fabulous. Wonderful. Uh, and especially if you pair those with a travel trailer. If you pair those with Anderson levelers, the curved levelers, you it you worked just, great it's a for thing us. Of beauty. It's, yep, it's fantastic. Once we switched to those, my job got so much easier. Oh, oh it was yeah. lovely. Uh, and Level Pro is good in everything, really, because even when you hit auto on a motorhome or on a, a big fifth wheel with like hydraulic legs and all that, your auto mm -hmm. there's a lot more slop in there. Auto yep. computer than I prefer. And level made and a couple other different types are have like a quarter inch tolerance. Yeah. It's way better. Uh, scissor jack drill adapter. Never did that. Nope. Um, you've probably heard people setting up. They will use impact drills to run their scissor legs down and back up. I never ended up with that. Uh, first of all, don't do that. Uh, just hand crank it or use a normal drill. It don't. You're not cinching it down super hard. They're not no. load bearing. They're just to cinch or to yep. firm things yep. up. Yep. Uh, our rig had power once yeah so we just hit a little button and, and they went down went down yep. and then we would have it hit the ground and just like crank just a second more and then off yep. just to snug it up you're not lifting the rig with them. no uh bike rack on ladder yes yep. we've done that in all of them all of them yeah <laughs> yeah those ladder bike racks there's just the little like l hook and then you just put kids yep. on it the kids great. bikes work fantastic yep. there and then great. last one is dehumidifier uh, Which we did not use in until, the first two rigs. Yeah. We got one for this one. We have one for this one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, get one. Humidity is the, the enemy Killer. of yes. RVs. So if you have issues with humidity, get a dehumidifier. Mm-hmm. Interesting list. Yeah. So um, just to let you know what else is, I'm not going to read all the other categories. I'm going to tell you the categories, but I'm not going to read you the list just so you can oh. like think about things too. That's huge. No, no, no. Just wait. Just wait. The next one was just what kind of vehicle we wanted to get what kind of jobs and stuff we could do on the road because we didn't have road appropriate first, jobs to begin with first year and a half we lived off of the money we made from, from selling, selling our house our yep um, i made a list of all the family things that i had to do before we moved out of the house like getting medical records and like making sure i had all of those documents that i needed to take the children with yep. me to go and places probably setting up escapees in texas yep and yep, yep, yep. all of that stuff that. was in there oh, okay. Um, children in school, I still hadn't figured out how I was going to yep. teach them. So figuring that out and then uh, with the children, like how they were going to be entertained while we were driving for five hours in the truck, you know, every four or five yeah. days. Um, and yeah, these are all great discord discussions. I know, uh, travel and then campgrounds, I guess, and how I was going to kind of go through there. And then that has stuff like memberships and mm. all those sorts of things that anytime anybody talked about something, I would write it down. Yep. Um, and then, uh, miscellaneous was, you can imagine if you really wanted the miscellaneous pop on into the family channel on uh, discord and we'll go over that. And then trip themes slash like blogging ideas or mm. vlogging ideas. We should do a, uh, um, video about these because these are very interesting about what we thought we would use to like dictate where we went in the country that's another video yeah so <laughs> stay tuned for that if you're interested about that or you have ideas about how you would travel or that way guesses. or guesses about what, what we the, thought i know what a couple of those are even without looking at the list because i remember some mm -hmm. of very vividly so what do you guys think our we would travel would for guide us around the country like i one of them sticks out in my head very yeah very. if you know me you know what it is. I know what it is. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, well, you know me, we'll right? share that. We'll know you a little bit. We'll share that with you guys in the next video. Yeah, so hopefully this has been an yeah. interesting exploration. I know a lot of you guys are new and shopping and looking around. It's a lot. It's, it's so much. It's overwhelming. Reach out. Find communities. Find people. Mm -hmm. Find help. Watch videos. And if you like us, come everything. to Discord. <laughs> yeah, it really, I think, and I'm not just saying it because we created this Discord. It has grown into its own thing. Oh, absolutely. All we did and we, we just, we lit the match and it has become this amazing bonfire of thousands of other RVers mm -hmm. that are all in there asking mm -hmm. questions, sharing stories. With having so fun. much expertise. Just, it's crazy what you can learn. So yeah. fiveyearcom slash discord. Talk to us, talk yep. to others, introduce yourself, share your knowledge or fill your brain. So yep. it, it's a great, great place. So. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, apparently we have another one coming up kind of similar to this. Yeah. Uh, but there's some other things coming as well. So stick around, make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, guys.